Hallelujah. Father, y'all, we do thank you for all things that your blessings upon our ears. We need your, your Holy Spirit that is within us to grant us the ears to hear your truth. And these sins would sink deep down in our hearts and bring about a performance. And this will glorify and magnify your holy name amongst the Gentiles so that sinners could be converted. We bless you for all things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you may be seated, Israel. All right. Hmm. You can definitely tell the sun is really not out much, can't you? Because you're starting to feel, you understand what I mean? You don't, you're, it's not as energetic. You know, when that vitamin D is not out there shining, you understand? Glory to the king. We've been talking about culture uh, uh, lately. Now, you, you're not going to find that word culture in the scripture. It's just something that we, I want to define a little bit more. Uh, You'll see words like heritage. uh, And then it, you know, the the Bible uh, tells us what we should be doing in this diaspora. Some people say diaspora, potato, potato. You know what I mean? You pick. Pick and choose. You understand what I mean? Tomato, tomato. You know what I mean? You pick whichever one you want. Um, The ideal is us that you know things are changing within all of us because of the word you know you can only be new because of the word and if the word isn't presented to you you know it depends on what category what area then how can you expect to change if you don't hear the word preached you understand how can we be conformed to his image if the word is not preached and you know um, I don't think this ministry has ever been accused of staying in one place too long or just being, you know, staunch, you know. There, there are some ministries that their whole thrust is just deliverance, and that's it. And then other ministries, the whole thrust is law, and that's just it. Then other ones being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's it. Every message, every Sabbath, sinners, totally around that all the time. And the Bible says, the scripture says that y'all hates a false balance. Now, y'all hear me? Y'all hates a false balance. And, and we want to make sure that we stay balanced. And of course, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm definitely not accused of not feeding y'all sheep. As a matter of fact, if anything, my indictment is, is that we get so much that from one week to the next, we don't have enough time to digest it until the next Shabbat, which is good. That means we're fat and not lean then, right? Hopefully with the word. Glory to the king. All right. Well, we're going to, again, we're going to go into, um, Define a little bit about the culture, but hey, brother Shane, go to Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and I, and I want to do whatever I can um, under the unction and power of the Holy Spirit, because remember, all truth comes from the Spirit of Truth, which is through Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus of Christ, and there is no truth that can be told unless His Spirit is involved. Am I making any sense? Uh, because there's only one truth, and that's Him, and that's it. Bottom line. No man can come unto the Father but by him. He is the door. You can't go in but by him. Is that right? Hallelujah. And we are only seeking to enter in at the door. All right, come on with it, brother. Saying 2 Chronicles 7, 14, what is commonly heard and we hear quoted all the time, but listen to the book. If my people. If, meaning if. You know, first you got to get some action in you to make sure that you're going to do something, but it's definitive, though. If, here's the key right here, my people see the whole world just assumes that they are his people the christians think that they are his people the baptists think that they are his people the muslims think that they are his people everybody who serves some deity being mighty one they believe that they are his people the catholics believe that they are his people but it's not talking to them are you following me so you see how even the father talks himself so with all his assumption where everybody who just drops Jesus off the edge of their lips and, and just give mental assent to ascribe to some form of salvation that he doesn't even recognize. All right, Father, let's just see it for what it is. He said, if my people, definitive, if they would do what, Brother Shane? Which are called by my name. We have his name, come on. Shall humble themselves. And do what? And pray. You know, a lot of this stuff we call prayer today is really not humbling prayer. You know, one day I'm going to get in here and demonstrate for y'all again what biblical prayer is. Again. 
you know, put on another one of my shows to show you exactly what it is, how to get in touch with the Father. Because we have a lot of people think they're in touch today and it's really out of touch. Hallelujah. Read on. And seek my face. Come on. And turn from their wicked ways. You hear that? So every time we come to the Father, we should be seeking to turn from our wicked ways. And, you know, most people, this is a little bit too much. You mean every time, every time I come here, I, I mean, the only thing I am is just wicked, 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 wicked. Yes, 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 yes. And more yes, and more yes, and more yes. Hallelujah. And it's just his favor that, that he would even be entreated of us to even listen to us. Hallelujah. See, that's the right attitude. And, and that I thank the Father for, that, that he can be entreated of us. That we can have favor um, of his, in his eyes. And he will listen to us, provided that we meet his conditions. Come on. Then will I hear from heaven. See, when you turn from your wicked ways, that's the only way that you're going to hear from heaven. You can't continue in sin and expect favor to be upon you. You can't continue in sin and expect this holy, righteous, clean creator to actually have fellowship and come and sup with you. Are you following me? Then would you hear from heaven. Read. And will forgive their sin. And your sins will be forgiven. And will heal their land. And that's the reason why our land is not healed today because America is not his people. All right. Now with that in mind, culture is a concept based on the term first used in classical antiquity by the Roman orator Cicero. Culture, I mean uh, cultivation of the soul. This non-agricultural use of the term culture, because agriculture, if you really truly think about the agriculture use of the term culture, that would be a whole lot more definitive than the word culture in itself because it actually produces, it grows, if you follow me. So when you think about culture, think about agriculture, think about uh, planting, think about growing, think about uh, providing, a, I mean, bringing forth a yield, if you understand what I mean. So it's about growing. But it has to come from a particular instance that you're growing from. All right, look at what it says. The term culture reappeared in modern Europe in the 17th century, referring to the betterment or refinement of individuals, especially through education. See, and that's the reason why in this country where they push through more than anything. Educated, they, they actually make you think you can be righteous if you just amass a lot of education. And what are we dealing with in religion today? Gnosticism. What? Knowledge. Just by reading a bunch of books and massing about an insurmountable amount of knowledge and stuff, people think that they can that would actually make them um, more righteous, a better believer. But it's no different than what the world is doing. Are you following me? All right. During the 18th and 19th century, it came to refer more frequently um, to the common reference points of the whole peoples, and discussion of the term was often connected to national aspirations or ideals, meaning that every culture, you know, you have a, a, the country has a culture, the city has a culture, the, the social system has a culture, the, the political system has a culture, the religious system of any particular country has a culture. So there are many different cultures inside of a country which could, which, which does have a culture. Now, make any sense? Culture, the beliefs, custom, arts, etc., or the particular society, group, place, or time, a particular society that has its own beliefs, way of life, art, and et cetera. See, and this is the one thing that hasn't never been truly defined for us living here in America. See, when we start reading this book and looking through the eyes and the lenses of the particular people who it was written to, then we can start to change our mind. Because if we don't, we'll continually to keep viewing this word through this American culture, having blind blinders on, thinking we're seeing when we're really truly not seeing. Because we've all been trained by this culture. We've all been influenced by this culture. It's all around us. A way of thinking, behaving, or working that exists in a place or organization such as business. Culture, again, the act of developing an intellectual or moral faculties, especially by education. And contrast that with religion today, Gnosticism. Culture means also to grow or increase. All right. Now, 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow in grace, grace means favor, and in knowledge of our master and savior, Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, meaning the esteem, both now and forever. Acts 6, 7, and the word of Yahweh increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem 
greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Notice the, the word increased because there were some faithful people to help make sure that this word increased because they were motivated to continue to keep pushing his word, preaching his word, teaching his word, and not only that, but being living examples of that word no matter where they went. And that's what we don't have today. We have a lot of people that would dress up, but, you know, when you watch their attitude, you watch their character, you watch their natures, you watch their spirits, they do not mimic the people of the book. Any way, shape, fashion, or form. As a matter of fact, if we seen, let's just say, let's just use uh, prophets, all right? If we, if we, you think we're really truly ready for a biblical prophet, uh, you're deceiving yourself. With the arrogancy and the egotistical attitudes of this particular society right here, if a prophet came up on the scene, our mindset and the way we think today, we do the same thing that we'd read about again and again and again. Huh? Jeremiah wouldn't stand a chance. Isaiah wouldn't stand a chance. Ezekiel wouldn't stand a chance. None of them would. We crucify them. You know why? Because of our minds, the way we process thought. And only a few righteous would be affected by them and say, hey, these are the men we need to really truly listen to because they can weigh what they're saying by the word that is imparted in them because their spirits agree. But for us to think that we're ready for a real true biblical prophet to enter into the world right now, no, we're not. I'm going to tell you when we get ready, when we are under such severe persecution that our ability to be able to have our opinion, our own attitudes, and our ability to resist is over with. That's when we'll be ready for real biblical prophets. Because when they show up on the scene, especially these two witnesses, which are two prophets, the, the situation in the world is going to be deplorable. It's going to be bad. Morality is going to be to the zenith. Immorality is going to be to a zenith. And when they come up on the scene, the world is going to be ripe. And think about it. All they're going to do is just want to persecute these prophets. Except these two prophets are going to be destroying people by fire coming out of their mouth. But even at that, they have a time appointed. And then look what the book of Revelation says, uh, the attitude of the world and what's going to happen when their bodies are laying dead in the, on the streets of Jerusalem. They're going to have one big gigantic Mardi Gras. They're going to have a New Year's Eve celebration and stuff. That's going to be the attitude of the world because, hey, we finally got rid of them nimbuses. And you think you're ready for biblical prophets. We're not even ready for a biblical pastor today. Are we ready for prophets? Huh? Ain't no way. We better get our hearts ready, though. What culture should we as ministers preach and teach, Christian or Hebrew? Which one? Now, you ask ourselves today, and be honest, what culture have we really truly preached the most of being in this country? A Christian culture. Are you following me? But we can actually say that we've got a balance in this because we've been preaching a whole, and teaching a whole lot of the ancient Hebraic culture because we're doing what the scripture says, knowing the signs of the times. Ephesians 4.11 said, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints. See, all of these gifts are there for the perfecting of the saints. Now, we don't look at men like at today who have been called by Yah as men who are called to perfect you. Because we have too many people weighing themselves among themselves, comparing themselves amongst themselves. You understand what I mean? And, of course, the Bible tells you if you do that, you're not wise. And, of course, all this type of wisdom that causes division doesn't descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and what? It's devilish, right? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, so that the body will be edified, till we all, boy, that's going to be something, isn't it? Till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more, what? Tossed to and fro. And what are we today? Tossed to and fro by what? Every wind of dark. Somebody blows. We're tossed. We're challenged. Isn't that right? Something said. Man, our spirit and our strength is just so small in the time that we're living in. Isn't that right? By the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It's hard for us, especially those of us who have decent hearts, well, we, if we want to call it that. That's, that there will actually be people who actually have a deceitful heart, who want to deceive you, who want to take advantage of you, who want to use you and misuse you and abuse you for their own personal gain. Because, see, it's hard for us to fathom that somebody would be like that when we look at our own selves and say, we well, wouldn't do that. Yes, Are you following me? Yes, huh? But then your heart is deceived, though, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? 
And it's just as wicked as the one who is actually taking advantage of you. Isn't it true? But speaking the truth in love, speaking the truth how? All right, now what, what, explain that one to me in this society. Let me soften up my voice. Let me be careful of my words and be sensitive towards you because I don't want the inflection of my voice to offend you. You know what I mean? So I need to make sure I try to present myself and, and, and cater to you so you'll be able to receive what I'm saying. That's this society today. Pay attention to how you talk, the way you talk, the way the word, rather than the substance of the word. You understand what I mean? Pastor, you should be more sensitive when you're talking to people and stuff. Maybe they get it more. No, y'all getting who you want to get. I'm sure Moses got the same counsel. Who, not from Cor not from Yah. He got it from Cor and the Birum, maybe, but he didn't get it from Yah. Isn't that right? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted. So we're supposed to be fitly joined together in what? Compacted, you know, like a puzzle. A puzzle only has a certain capacity it has to occupy, right? And then we should be fitly joined together, meaning certain parts fit with certain parts. And it's joined together and compacted, is that right? By that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, making the increase of the body edifying of itself in love. So that everybody can see the whole body as a whole in love and not just say just one individual has love but the whole body is demonstrating that agape love is that right culture is also the medium through how we express ourselves who do we represent in this earth you see people can look at you and, and tell who you represent whether they like it or don't like it they mean they even call you the devil you know what i mean because you decide to push forth holiness in this society right here so, you know, everything is such out of balance and everything. And, then, and these Christians who are breaking all the commandments, destroying the dietary law, they'll call themselves the staunch believers. Yeah. That's the kind of world we live in today. Where people call good, evil, and evil good. Culture, our Hebraic culture teaches us to be in this world, but not of the world. That sounds like a diametrically opposed statement on it. How in the world can you be in this world, not of the world? Well, you can't have the same attitude. You can't follow the same mighty ones. You have laws. You have rules and guidelines. You already follow me? The world, they don't have any of that stuff except what man creates, and then they fear man more than they do y'all. Are you following me? Our problem is this Hebraic culture has been taken away from us. So here we are establishing, remember the word restore? Restore, or the restoration of all things is to bring things back, right? To bring things back which was lost. To bring into remembrance. And, and you look at much, how much that is being despised today, even amongst those who name the name of Yahshua. Because we've been immersed for so long. Over here, that uh, there are things that rise up in our spirit that we're not even aware of, even our own self. You should be appalled at some of the things that's going on within your heart. Literally. That heart is deceitful. Now, that's a lie. It's not yours, right? Above all things, desperately wicked. But our Hebraic culture has been taken away from us, and we are immersed and totally surrounded by Christian aspects, Christian culture. The residue of it is still even on us. We see things, the first thing come up in our mind, as far as thought go, is the way we used to think. No wonder... No wonder the Apostle Saul said, uh, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How about renew your mind back to the form of things of old? How about thinking culturally the way that the ancient Hebraic people think? Well, then we get off into the educated folks who say, well, we're in a different dispensation of time. Or well, we could be in a different dispensation of time, but there's nothing new under the sun. Isn't that right? I mean, you go talk to them Bedouins over there. Them Bedouins still live like the days they did when Abraham walked his earth. Uh-oh, see what civilization and captivity has done? Yeah. It's done change our whole entire mindset. I mean, you even think about this. Even us as Hebrews and stuff, our form of worship, worship outwardly pales in comparison to the Muslims today over in the East. Yes, sir. Why? Because we have been robbed and been spoiled, and then we live and make excuses for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember, how many times ever I've talked to you that just because you have a thought that comes to your mind don't mean that you give voice to it? 
you don't unleash hell just because it's inside of you. You should be casting it down right. rather than to give power and strength to it. Because when it goes out, it's going to accomplish something. Do you understand? Y'all getting this? So we didn't learn how to put a governor on. I guarantee you over there in the East, them people know when and how to talk because they're very honorable and respectful people. See what this culture has done for us? Of people who have been robbed and spoiled? And it's really dangerous when we name the name of Yah and have no holiness to actually back up to what we name. That is, isn't it? Judges 2.1, look at this to the book. And the angel of Yahweh came up from Gilgal and bought him and said, I made you to go up out of Mizraim and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. That's the father now. Now we know that he's an Elohim of his word. He's never in question. But he's not saying that because he's trying to remind himself of who it is, who he is. He's trying to tell you who you need to be. In other words, if I'm going to make treaty, if I'm going to make alliances, I'm going to make pledges, I'm going to make covenants, I'm going to make agreements with you, then, then by God you should never ever break yours with me. Because he never gives us a reason to break it. Isn't that true? And ye shall make no league. Covenant, alliance, pledge, treaty, constitution, agreement, ordinances. Being immersed in this culture, you can't even hardly function in this culture without what? Doing every single one of them. Making something. We have a constitution in the United States of America. A lot of these patrons and everybody else esteem more than the constitution of that book, which is the first five books of Moses. Or the law, or what is commonly called the Torah. That constitution written by men in these people's eyes up to date means more than the first five books that's written down in this law right here. I don't care who it is. They esteem men, and then the precept or the fear of y'all is taught to them by men. But you make sure you put man first, though. Isn't that right? We go out and get their contracts, we get their agreements, their pledges, their ordinances, everything. And what he said, look at, it, look, at the, look at the book says now, you shall make none of these with the inhabitants of the land. You shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Do y'all see the reason why Pastor Dow so upset? Because I know what would happen if, if we do the very opposite, which is obey his voice. Then all these curses and everything else is upon us. All this captivity, everything will start to change, including the captivity first, which you are enslaved in your mind. You start thinking right. You start acting right. You start living right. Well, you get rid of this captivity. You break the chains of this captivity. But you know the old adage though goes, right? A slave that loves his chains, eh, he don't want to be free. He's going to get used to them. You know, right? But the instruction is when you go into these places, you throw on the altar, you ask yourselves, how much have you really, truly, vehemently done this? Your desire has been so much of the Father that you really, truly don't want to destroy the altars. Let's go with the altars that we have within our hearts. That we've learned from being immersed in this culture, especially making an idol of our own opinions. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why? The question is, have you done this? This is the way the book talked to us. We ought to restore every single thing that has ever been lost to us. Do you understand that? But again, how can you restore something that's been lost if you don't know you've been lost? How can you restore something that is lost if you've never known it's been lost? Well, we have to, hey, the book has all the answers for the prophets. Their words speak throughout all of eternity and has the seal and stamp of approval of the Almighty Father on it. Yes, EIU 42, 18 says here, you deaf and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as Yahweh's servant? Seeing many things, but observers not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. That's happening today. All this is. 
People say they see, say they hear, and when you watch them, you can tell they ain't hear or heard anything. They haven't heard or seen anything. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil. And none saith restore. Well, we can't say that today, can we? Because for the past few years, I've been saying what? Restore. Return. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to robbers? Did not Yahweh, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways. What was Israel's problem? Well, we scared to say it too, ain't we? Same cancer we have today. Look at all these people claim to be Israel, but they won't walk in his ways. Neither were they obedient unto his what? How are you going to be obedient and then especially develop a desire of obedience to his law when you've been immersed in a culture that is constantly putting your subconscious, this law done away with. And if you don't believe you believe that, watch, watch how little you esteem his law though. Anybody can say words off the edge of their lips. But very few people can have that kind of heart and that kind of fear that would actually agree with this word and bring forth a performance. Therefore he hath poured out him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. Going over to Isaiah 58, 12. And they that shall be of these shall build the old waste places. See, the prophets is letting us know that when time, you know, this is our father does thing in timing, right? There'll be an auction. There'll be a spirit upon his people that will say these things, restore. They will say, let's build. They'll say, return. They'll say, let us establish. They'll say, let us esteem constantly. It'll be in their speech because they re recognize and realize a problem. Our condition is sick and the whole heart is faint. So I know that the Father's dealing with us. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach. In other words, we're going to start bridging the gaps in between all this. And this happened in this ministry a long, long time ago. Especially when we start saying, we're going to start reading this apocrypha. Don't care what this world says. That's bridging a big gap. Just in the word. And look at it. Look at it. These people, these men, the restorer of paths to dwell in. And what people are fighting against more than anything today. Returning, restoring, repairing the breach. Brother saying, get Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 through 17 and read, please. Just go ahead and start reading when you get it. So you see, this is where we at once again in history. And you'll see, um, or you'll hear after we hear Brother Shane read the prophet of Jeremiah. Listen. Thus saith the master of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of Yahweh is unto them a reproach. Is that not the condition that we're dealing with today? Uh, you know that today people get offended if, if, if the word is preached and it brings about conviction? 
That's the attitude that we're dealing with, the spiritual attitude. Rather than looking how to get with this word and line up with this word and be an example of this word, we're looking at a way to trump it. We're looking at a way to argue against it. We're looking at a way to contend with the word. Read. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of Yahweh. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith Yahweh. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone is given to what? Covetousness. It seems like no matter where we turn at in the word, we keep hearing that over and over and over again. And of course, covetous is what? Is idolatry. And what does the Apocrypha say about a covetous man? A covetous man is not satisfied with his portion. I mean, everyone's given over to it. What is this society all about? Covetous. The lust of the eye. Everything, every aspect of it. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride. All has to do with covetous. Read. And from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Y'all hear that? Now go into some of these assemblies and camps and start preaching like this and see how many people are going to keep on coming. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear a smooth thing. They want to hear something that's going to tickle their ear and make them feel better. They don't want to hear all this reproof. I'm telling you, our condition, you know, we have something to dance for when we meet y'all's conditions. Then true praise can be perfected in his saints. Once we realize, once we realize the condition that we're in. Read on. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace. When there is no peace. You know there's people out there that's trying to bring peace to people when there's literally ain't no peace to the wicked. Read on. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Mm -mm. Nay. They were not all ashamed neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Ask for the what paths? The old paths. Now, how many people you know is asking for this today? Come on. Go, go out there to the biggest social media network there is on YouTube and see. How many people is saying, let's get back to these old paths? And then if they are saying it, what are the people saying in return? Why? Because they're giving over to covetousness. You know what's unique about each and every last one of these prophets? Because each one of these prophets is talking from a position of the people being in captivity. Are you following me? And where we at still? You see what I mean? We forget these little things right here. This is why we need to hear this word. This is why these words need to be rehearsed. In our ears again and again and again and again and again. So we don't repeat the same things again. But how you know if you repeat the same things again if you're not reminded of them? Because surely you're not reading this book that way. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read on. And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your soul. Read that verse again, Brother Shane. Come thus, on your mic. Thus saith Yahweh. Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. Stand in the ways and see, and do what? Ask for the ask old. Ask for the old paths. Remember last Shabbat, I said, how many of y'all even pray that way? Huh? How many of y'all even pray? I've been praying that way for years. And then you can tell the understanding is coming. He has honored it because what? He's given me the spirit to be able to push it. Hmm? Stand ye in the way and ask for the old paths. Read. Where is the good way? Where, where is it at now? Where is it? He's showing us. In the midst of a wicked and perverse generation, he's showing us. 
in every aspect, starting with his law. Come on. And walk therein. And do what with it? Walk, walk therein. Most people choose to ignore and walk along the other path. But we got to ask for the old path and walk in it. Is that right? Yes, Why? Well, new path ain't no good. Read on. And ye shall find rest for your soul. That's when the souls or the weary, who is really weary, that's when they're going to have rest. Is when you start walk, asking for the old ways, seeing the path, and then walking in it. And most of you too hard-headed to walk in it. you too full of you. And thinking that y'all going to continue to keep on bargaining with you. That's, what kind of attitude you think we got with being immersed in this culture? And then the deception is, is we think that y'all going to continue to keep putting up with us in this condition. All we have to do is go back and read the history. Look how the prophets had to talk to the people. And see, because there ain't too many, if we don't know any prophets in this land, if we did hear them, were we really truly given an attentive ear? The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. Nothing but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. That's, I'm serious. That's, that's the condition of us as a people. And we try to say, no, we're doing fine. We doing good, don't we? Yeah, we do. We try to say, oh, come on, we, we're doing fine. We're doing good. Come on. Hey, come on. We, yeah, we try to encourage ourselves. We ain't really nothing that encourage. Oh, hallelujah. But uh, how in the world can the people get right like this? I just read that when you start asking for the old paths, you seek for them ways, you start walking in it, then that's when you'll find rest for your soul. So don't tell me you have rest for your souls right now because you don't. More our souls, our minds, our wills, and emotions all disturbed. We're mentally insane, mentally challenged, ready to go to the insane asylum because we can't cope with the thoughts that we're challenged with on a daily basis. Can't, can't, can't make stuff even meet together and comprehend. Why? Because we're refusing the old paths to walk in the old ways. Whew. See, this last captivity right here is, is, I mean, the enemy has learned how to really captivate us. <laughs> he has learned how to read the Psalms over in 83. He, they have learned how to remove us so far from ourselves, from really truly who we are, that it, 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 there's only going to be a few that's going to return. Right. Only going to be a few that's going to return. And the people today don't serve him in fear. Isn't the fear of y'all the beginning of wisdom? And to depart from iniquity is understanding? Isn't it? Why? Because words like this, showing us our condition, where we at, is ignored today. Read on. But they said. What did they say? We will not walk therein. See, today people are not saying that. You just watch their walk, though. And their walk is telling you everything that they're, what they're going to do. The attitude of the people is to do that which is right in their own eyes and not remember the old ways. The real teachers have come out just before his return. Why? Listen to what the prophets say again. Who prophesied to us? Thus said Yahweh Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, in returning. In what? And rest shall ye be saved. You see, we ain't going to get past going back. We're not going to get past looking back. How in the world are you going to look to the kingdom when you can't look back? <laughs> huh? There's no way you're going to do it. We have to return, return, and rest. I don't care what prophet we go to, all of them keep saying the same thing. These are the passages of scripture that are skipped over because they ain't popular. Why, these ain't the smooth things that we want to hear. Because to do this, that means we have to sacrifice. Oh hallelujah. oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and not be at ease in this world. Right. For thus have y'all Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, in returning the rest, ye shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. But ye say, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift. 
Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. And at the rebuke of five shall ye flee. Till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain. And as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will Yahweh wait. That he may be gracious unto you. And therefore he. Well, therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For Yahweh is an ale of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. And wait don't mean you sit down and sit in a chair with a, with a glass of lemonade and do nothing. Wait is you're occupying until he comes. For the people said, dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. The voice of your cry, though. Not the voice of your hallelujah, pray, glory, not the voice of your cry. And though Yah will give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into the corner anymore. What's happening now? Y'all's bringing out the teachers to restore? Yeah, he is. And the people saying, we don't want to walk that way. We don't want to go that way. We don't believe that. I don't like it. We ain't going to do it. Ain't it true? But he said your teachers are not going to be removed. They're not going to be marginalized. They're not going to be pushed over in a corner and their voices ignored any longer. Why? The prophet's voices wasn't pushed over in a corner ignored. They, they prophesied and they spoke whether people were here or forbear and it still got them what? Stoned and killed. By who though? The world? These people. Don't you know we live in a generation now where people deceived themselves in believing that they would receive Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel, Obadiah and Amos and Zechariah? Yeah, we the same people. We, 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 I'm saying this generation is so deceived, they believe that they would receive them. That's how deceived we are. Robbed and spoiled as a people. Finished. And those are the hammer of the most high. Oh, yes, they are too. And then he turns around and says, I'm going to give you a pass according to my heart. We ain't going to hear it. We ain't going to walk in it. We ain't got to listen to you. I ain't got to put up with that. I ain't going to do it. Same thing. Ain't nothing different, is it? But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ears shall hear the word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, we need to turn back to this. Hallelujah. With our whole heart. You see, our culture is this landmass right here. Not here and not here. But the culture that's ruling the world today is from here. This is the culture that is ruling the world today. It's from here. Do y'all understand? Colossians 2 8 says, You beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Vain, outright deceit. Look how many traditions have been given to us. We, we got so many traditions. Hell, we got even people quoting, I love tradition. <laughs> Don't have no idea what they're saying. Tradition of who? Men. Who claim to have tradition of y'all. Isn't that right? After the laws of this world. And not after the Messiah. What is the word? Beware. People are going to turn you. They're going to turn your heart from the Father. America's culture, social, political, economic, and religious is Greco-Roman. All systems in this American culture is Greco-Roman. The Bible was translated from a European perspective, not a Hebraic perspective. We should read in context, but what is more important? Well, but what is more important? 
is the culture in which the Hebraic scriptures come from. That is what is important. It was this culture that gave us all that we know today. Our problem is, is we've been looking through the wrong lenses. We've been perceiving and thinking things through the wrong lenses, and that's the reason why we don't have rest for our souls. Because the nations have learned how to twist, spin, warp, and distort this word and produce real good religious people. And we've, we've swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. And any time y'all's way is presented to us, we fight. Especially our thought pattern and our religious influence. You see, this is the way our mind comes from, whether we like it or not. It comes from things like this. And the peoples of these lands. That's all we know. Imagine how Jeremiah looked way back then warning and his words even still echo till today because people are still doing the same things. Yea, these many thousands of years later and people still have not taken heed to the prophet Jeremiah. Especially, he don't care about the world. He's talking about his people. Learning the ways of the heathen. And I almost venture to say we know more about the history of this than we do our own. Isn't that a mess? That's where our understanding and all our education and philosophy come from. These cultures right here, this is all that America is. These are the people that's given us the religion that we believe today. No wonder the scripture says, come out of her, my people. Intelligence. Not because you think you know everything without questioning, but rather because you question everything you think you know. And you tell me, that ain't the way I function. <laughs> I'm telling you, a long time ago, I turned on a dial or something and said, man, I, wait a minute, I'm questioning all of this. I'm about to do this and open my because this stuff just ain't jiving, it ain't making sense, it's just been too many lies. And it's amazing. Two decades later, I'm still thinking like that. That is a lot of lies and a lot of junk. Is it not? We've been infected. No, this is like that little thing every time I put it up there. I mean, I, I just go back. I go purposely in the computer search for that thing because that, that's, that's our mind. We've been, we have been infected. We got viruses big time. Hallelujah. Again, we need to understand the geographical location of where our people are. Are you following me? And the way they think? And we need to get back to this. If anything, we need to probably go do a search on the Bedouin people and then try to see how they do things. Uh-oh. We got to think. And we need to think deep and hard, too. And I can't do this for you. Culture is very big in understanding the scriptures and not enough emphasis is ever placed upon it. Not enough emphasis. We can't even drive home hard how much of this scripture we need in us. How much of this word we need in us. It needs to become our thoughts, our fabric, our very being. Our breath. These ideas are, has a hard and very, this idea has had a very big impact upon our thoughts. And the way we have believed about Yahweh. So we thought. We have actually been taught another Jesus and another salvation by the religion of our captors, Christianity. See, when you first start talking against Christianity, there's everything inside of you that is opposing it. Yet and still, you still push because you know the truth that sets free. Because you have to fight against all the indoctrination that has been placed in you because these people have formed your subconscious mind. And you've really got to push really hard before you can get that thought out of your conscience and no longer be influenced by it. And that's when people start hating you. Isn't that amazing? Revelation 18, 4, 18, 4 said, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Who people? Not the world. What are we going to come out of? If, you're, if it, we're his people, come on. 
We got to come out of these nations of this world, come out of their mind. We got to come out of all this stuff. And be not partaker of our sins, and then you receive not of our plagues. 2 Corinthians 16, 4, or 2 Corinthians 6, 14, excuse me. And be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteous with unrighteous, and what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Belial, or what part have he that believe with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of Yah with idols? For ye are the temple of the living Yah, as Yah have said. I will dwell in them, and will walk in them, and I will be there, Yah, and there shall be my people. And you can't tell me that a lot of these people have the acts of the Father dwelling inside them today with the way that they're living. There ain't no way. You ain't going to tell me somebody lying. Either I'm lying or, 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 or they lying. They tell the truth I'm lying or I'm telling the truth and they lying and both of us can't be right. You think about that. Think about this. A, how many people you know? Family, relatives, friends, associates, constituents. All of them claim that they know the Father. And you're sitting up there thinking there ain't no way you and I can know the same Father. Something is gravely wrong. There ain't no way we can know the same father. If we know the same father, how, you, how is it that you come to this conclusion? Hallelujah. What for come out from among them and be ye separate, say of Yahweh and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, say of Yahweh Almighty. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he to come and preach another Jesus, that's what we have had preached to us ever since the inception of this country. Another Yahshua. Another salvation. Another way. There ain't nothing in the Torah written about Christianity. Yet it's the largest religion in the world. How did the devil do that? And then use what they call the Messiah of the, of the Israelites to do it. I know what he did. Can't beat them. Join them. And they joined us and gave us a false one. If ye have not preached, ye have not received another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. This is not the culture of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These men were Hebrews, and Jacob started the line of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were not, and I say again, they were not Christians. They didn't give us this. They spoke against that. They damn sure didn't give us that. What well, deers are flying all over the place now. You think about how idiotic and stupid you got to be to sell better to think that a fat man can have a sled and then a thing that don't have wings can actually fly with antlers. And then can root all the red nose can light the whole sky with a nose that, right, that, that shines red. You know the impact of, I'm going to tell you what the impact was on me when I found out the truth. I was like, my mom and dad lied to me. That's the way I processed the thought. I said, hey, there ain't no such thing, no Santa Claus. Well, yeah, we know that. Then why'd you lie to me? You don't want me lying to you? You know the impact upon something? Well, you know how religion dresses up. Oh, it's for the children. Let them have their little fun. What, in a lie? Yeah. Right. You hypocrites. And you'll turn around and tell your children, you better not ever lie to me. Mm -hmm. You deceivers. Yeah. I bet you better believe it. I ain't never lied to my children. I ain't had no reason to. Does anything need to be said? <laughs> the American culture, the Christian experience has greatly influenced how we look at the text of Scripture. That's why when you read this book, you need to be careful through what eyes you are reading these Bible, this Bible through. And by what people or influence on your mind are you perceiving this? You need to have it into your heart and in your mind. I need to think like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all the prophets. I need to see the way they thought about this. 
and look at it that way, then you'll be on the right point. Because, hey, we can scream and holler, you know, read things in context all day long. But we need to really truly start really truly placing a lot of emphasis on what culture was this. Because we can read things in context all day long, and since we've all been reared and raised and trained in society, we come to the same conclusion. But we can, hey, but we read it from their eyes and look through their lens, and so we'll come to a different conclusion than what this culture has given us. Y'all see how serious this thing is? We've been toyed with. Yeah, we have. We've been, and you should be offended. You got these people playing with your eternal soul. I promise you, when Shemai ain't come, you ain't going to see no damn Santa Claus and no Christmas trees and reindeers and no rabbits laying eggs. And Yahweh is offended at his people. See, I understand. We were born into this captivity. We were born into this slavery. Well, guess what? Still no excuse. No matter who you are, repent. No matter where you be, repent. Turn from your wicked way. And our problem is our desire is not to repent. Why? Because from the least of them to the greatest of them, they are all given to covetousness, selfishness, full of self. And you think you're ready for a prophet? The last thing many of you people better do is you better not ever even think about making a trip to Jerusalem if them two prophets show up on the scene. You're going to bring your modern-day, arrogant, egotistical mindset. They may just torch your ass right there standing. Because of causing blaspheming upon Yah's name, claiming to be an Israelite, claiming to be someone that's following the book and stuff, and they got to purge Israel from your deception. Come on. I'm telling you. Think about this. The way we going, them prophets just may walk through that door one day. Think about that. And ain't nobody going to hide. And I'll be giving them an open floor welcome. Hey, come on in. I'll roll out the carpet for them. And I'll be glad to tell them. You tell them people, every single one of them, tell them the deceit in my heart if there's any at all. Because I want to know before I get out of here. And we, I'm going to tell you one thing. America ain't ready for those two prophets. No, you ain't. <laughs> no, we are not. I tell you, it would be nice if they come walk through these doors before they head on over to Jerusalem. I mean, they could probably pop all over the earth anyway. Huh? Glory to the king. Y'all see the reason why I push us and strive? Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Want to go in. Hallelujah. Psalms 116. Come on with it, Brother Shane. Let's read this book. We got to close this thing up. Can y'all feel the push in the spirit when I preach and teach? Huh? Y'all feel that, that spirit? <coughs> that the Holy Spirit pushing you? Oh, yeah. <coughs> that ain't man. I ain't got no strength to pop, but that word does. <laughs> huh? That word be pushing you. Ugh. God. <laughs> Read, bro, saying, I love Yahweh because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Mm. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of Yahweh. O Yahweh, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is Yahweh and righteous. Yeah, our Elohim is merciful. Yahweh preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. Mm. For Yahweh had dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before Yahweh in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. 
I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto Yahweh for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of Yahweh. And I will pay my vows unto Yahweh now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of Yahweh is the death of his saints. O oh, Yahweh, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of Yahweh. I will pay my vows unto Yahweh now in the presence of all his people in the courts of Yahweh's house in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise Yahweh. We got to get back to these commandments wholeheartedly. More than just quoting them and reading them. Y'all hear me? These books have to be in our hearts. I really, truly do. And you spend a lot of time in Torah, saints. A lot of times in the law. Are y'all hear me? Because the king coming. And he's coming back for a people without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Hallelujah. And he keeps telling us that his righteousness is of the law. So how much do you think we need to know that law then? Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Abba Yah, we thank you for all things. Pray to your sins sink deep down in our hearts. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we thank you for your words of truth and reminding us of where we need to be at as a people. And we live to bring glory to your holy name. Bless all the saints that are scattered abroad, each and every last one of them. Encourage their hearts. Encourage their minds. With the spirit of truth, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Shalom, King coming.